This is my entry into Emma's tool making competition. I'm going to make some V-blocks and what I'm making it out of is this old pin that I found ages ago and it was pretty damaged. It was harder than anything but I threw it in the wood burner for a while to get it nice and hot. It actually got hot enough it blistered the steel in it and then it just on the outside then it I let the fire go out so it cooled down with the wood burner. It annealed it and made it machinable. So it is hardenable steel and I'm going to cut it off right about here, make some V-blocks out of it and yeah, the problem with making the V-blocks is usually you need a V-block to make a V-block. See the problem there. That or you need cutters on a milling machine or some other setup or a tilting table or a sign bar or whatever. I don't have any of that. So, I'm going to do it another way. Let's get started. Okay, I got the thing all cut up, put in there, and I just scribed a line almost to the center point, and I'll take a quarter of it out. I got it setting on some parallels here just to lift it up into the vise so that it doesn't, I can get access to it, go almost till it's touching the jaw, and I'll measure it so it's equal this way down and over. Now we got a reference surface to actually machine the rest of it off of. Feeding up by hand, I've gone across and just feeding up right now, very finely, so that it will give a good finish. Then I'll measure how far I'm off. So I want this direction and that direction to be equal. Then we'll flip the thing upside down and yeah. Okay, I got it V-groove cut, it's equal on both sides, now I just flipped it in the vise here, I'll clamp everything down, or tighten everything up, and just do a cut on the bottom here, and then I'll have two reference surfaces. I'll put a rod in the V-groove, and put it up against the gel here, and the flat part here will go up against the, the front face, which I know is square doing it this way, then I can cut the sides nice and square to the V-groove. I'll probably put a rod in here and then parallel on the rod, support the rod, and just clamp the thing solid to do the sides. That way I know that it's perpendicular to the groove in the parallel itself. Okay, I've already, I just touched off, and I'll feed down, I got set to zero, so I'll feed down 250 thousandths, which is what I need to create a flat on here, and we'll go at it. Take a, take a 50 thousandths, it should be good to go. Keep 
cigar was slightly tapered because it was worn. It was a pin from something or another, but it had wear on it, so it's, it was kind of tapered a little bit, so I just got to machine the taper out. exactly parallel to the bottom because it got the tapered feature so I just took a piece of angle iron and machined them perfectly equal on both sides and I just stuck it under there now to prop the it'll act like a parallel that's or a triangle parallel so I'll cut the bottom off here and flip it over and just do a facing cut on the top to do that up. I'll set the speed down and do a finishing pass that's raw light or a low step over so it gives a good finish. Okay, I got it faced off. It's twisted a little bit because of I must have caught the vise or something and it twisted it but it won't really matter because I'm gonna use a rod in here and put it right on the parallel and when it's done that this will be against the gel so it'll keep it perfectly square and level now to the V groove itself So I'll get this all set up as soon as I find a parallel that's thin enough. I gotta find one. And then I'll start cutting this down till it's square and repeat the same thing on the other end. I started eating my bit, so I swapped it out, put my homemade gooseneck in that I forged out, so. This seems to be doing pretty well. This is a pretty hard steel and for the forged tool to hold up quite well, I'm very impressed. And the service finish is absolutely amazing. of eighth inch bar and I I tried a ruler and it just didn't seat very well and it 
cut it at a cheaper. So now I got the car and it's completely parallel. I looked at it and it's looking pretty good so far. So I'm just taking the taper off that the other one put on. After this is done, I'll flip it and do the other side. Then we'll cut it in half and make two uh, V-ball blocks. Finally, last side, I have the bottom of the V-block setting up against this jaw here. And in the V-group, I actually have a half-inch rod to space it off of the jaw a little bit so that it's... Yeah, you can see. But that way it's nice and square. So it'll be square and nice and parallel to all faces. And in line or in parallel with the, yeah, parallel with the V groove itself too. Even though the rod was tapered and it would have been a lot easier to start with straight rod, but I didn't have any, especially not in hardened steel, or in tool steel. Okay, all done. Let's take it out of the vise and see what we got. Still have to measure it for for everything, but yeah. Gotta deburr this side, I got a burr right here. Which I'll just take a file to it real quick and I'll Yeah. Not bad for a pin that was all tapered and chewed up and I had no chance at ever getting straight again. Or machining straight on it. I'll take and deburr this thing real quick, clean it up, and just lap everything. And we'll stick it on the saw, cut it in half, and have the two E blocks. Then I'll harden them and lap them again afterwards. Okay, I'm just doing a final cleanup pass on the bottom because it had a little bit of a tilt, just a few thousandths, and it bugged me. So I took and took the sides since they're square. I'm, I butted the one side up against the front jaw and uh, put a, the half inch rod back into the V groove so that it's when I hit knocked it down with the lead hammer, it knocked, it seated it and would make it perfectly parallel to the stroke of the ram, or ram. So now it's just cleaning up the bottom pass and it'll be parallel top to bottom and parallel to the V-groove. It's all good. Left is to cut them in half to make two out of the same one, and that's it. I'll come back when it's cut, done cutting, and I'll lap the joints that are sawed off, or I might just show them before I lap them. It's getting late, anyways. Okay, I got them all cleaned up. 
very nice. You can't see it, but they have a mirror reflection to them. So, I got some fingerprints all over it. So, yeah. They're, I already test them with the caliper. They are within a thousandths from end to end, or they were before I cut them. So, yeah. Might have been that way. Yeah, they were within a thousandths of an inch. So they're pretty good precision. Now all you gotta do is take and harden them and lap them back in again, and they should last forever. These are going to be used for holding ground stock in the shaper vise for doing stuff like cutting thread or the flutes for taps and stuff. So this is something I've been wanting for a while and now I have two of them. Okay, I'm going to call it. Thanks for watching. See ya.